I've been live streaming every day at the same time for the last 30 plus days. And some really interesting things have happened, both good and bad, related to money, related to subscribers, related to views. I'm here to share all the things that have happened since going live for 30 days plus straight in case you are interested in going live yourself. Should you go live daily? Should you go live maybe once a week? Well, let's see what happens. Now I started going live, in fact, about 36 days ago. And as you can see here, um, the show is called The Income Stream. It wasn't always called that. That name came out a little bit later after uh, it was decided that this was gonna be like a real show that I was gonna dedicate every single day to. Um, but the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanted to go live for my audience to give them something regular to look forward to. And there's been a lot of benefit to being consistent at the same time every single day. But the first thing I wanna share with you is that even though it's been 30 plus days now, I still get a little nervous right before we go live every single time. Like the nerves will not go away. And you know, I've done something similar speaking on a lot of live stages, thinking that one day after hundreds of talks, the nervousness would go away, but very similarly, it doesn't. I've just learned that for things like this, the nervousness doesn't go away and you kind of have to embrace it. In fact, I once heard that the same parts of your brain fire up for when you're fearing and scared and when you're excited. So I'm just trying to rewrite the story in my head every morning when I go live at 8 a.m. Pacific that I'm just really excited to go live. And that helps me get the courage to hit go live every single morning. And that's the best strategy for just getting over the fear, just literally hitting go live. And once you hit that, well, there's no turning back. There's a great book out there by a woman named Mel Robbins, and it's called The Five Second Rule. And the gist of it is, hey, if there's something you're nervous about or something that you know you should do, just like a rocket countdown, count down from five and just go. Just like, don't psych yourself out of it. The more you think about it, the more likely it is that you're gonna talk yourself out of it. I have the same rule when I go to conferences and I try to meet people who I'm scared to meet because I'm a little fanboyish. Hey, just don't talk yourself out of it. Five seconds, five, four, three, two, one, go live and you'll be all set. And that helps me through every morning. Essentially, after the first minute or two, you know, we're rolling, there's nothing I could do to go back, and everything starts to flow after that. So the best advice I can give you is if you are nervous about going live, just go live anyway. What have you got to lose? Your dignity, just kidding, no, not really. Truly, there's really nothing to lose. Number two, my video views are up. Now, part of it is up because, well, I'm just going live every day, so of course there's more viewers and a lot of the same people are coming in, so the numbers are up for that reason. But in fact, the total number of views from all the live streams do not add up to the significant rise in views I've had just overall in my channel. Check this out here on my analytics. If I go over the past 90 days, this is about the time I started going live. On average, I was getting about eight, 10,000, eight to 10,000 views a day. And then now I'm at a point where it's essentially doubled. My views have doubled across the whole channel. And yes, again, a part of that are the live streams, but not most of it. In fact, a lot of my other views have gotten a lot of extra love from, I don't know if it's from these viewers or from the algorithm. You know, there is something to be said for going live and having a much larger watch time, a lot more engagement. I mean, some of these uh, lives that I do have 1,200, 1,400, one of them was 1,800 comments. And we know that sometimes those things play a role, not just in how well those videos perform in YouTube, but how well your overall channel can eventually perform in YouTube. And I've asked uh, around a lot of people and I have uh, heard that in most cases, when you go live, more often than not, those statistics can indeed improve your audience. Now, there are a lot of other factors involved and it obviously depends on how well you do on those lives and those kinds of things but I am seeing a direct correlation from when I started going live to starting to see some velocity in some of my videos that have been coming out um, and even more love for the newer videos that are pre-recorded that get published too. As you can see here, my subscribers are pretty much following the views as well. Uh, on this day, I got like over 400 subscribers, which I don't think I've ever had more than 400 subscribers before. But I do know for a fact that a lot of people who are in the room are inviting their friends to watch especially now during quarantine time, a lot of people are looking for regular content. And what I love about the situation and why I think going live now is a beautiful opportunity is because think about it, all these late night show people like Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel and you know uh, daytime television hosts like Ellen, like we're all at home now. We're, it's a level playing field, people. So you have the opportunity to play on that same field. And with a little bit of knowledge about who it is you're serving and uh, maybe a little bit of equipment behind it or some good software to help you go live as well, man, you might be able to outperform those who are normally in front of a larger audience live with some crew behind them. 
now we're all at home. Who's gonna win? By the way, thank you for all the recent comments about my latest video about the software that I'm actually using to go live. It's called Ecamm Live. I'll put a link up there to uh, the video. It's getting a, a lot of love right now and it's helping a lot of people. So if you wanna check out the software I use and how I use it and how I structure it, uh, how I organize it so that I literally don't have to think when I'm going live and I can make it engaging, click on that info bar up there or click on the link in the description below. Oh, and really quick before I move on, one little thing that I experimented with that actually worked really well was uh, when I have a video that, a regular video that I wanna publish, I try to time it to publish right at the end of the live stream. In fact, what I'll do is I'll be live and using Ecamm, I'll share my screen and I'll share my screen going public with the video that was already preloaded uh, as unlisted in my channel and I'll go live and I'll ask my audience right there, hey, the video just went live, Go like it, comment, watch it, help it out. And if you provided value for those people live, many of them are gonna wanna go out and help you. And so you can get some good velocity out of the gate with some of your regular videos, thanks to a live stream that you've just held. It's almost like a little tiny premiere, if you will, for those videos that you come out with. Any little bit helps. So yeah, that works for me too. Number three, one crazy thing that's happened is I've seen the same people come in the room every single day. Now we've had a lot of new people come in and a lot of people come in and then leave and then come back later. It's funny because there's a lot of regulars in the house like Rap and Combat, Earn, and Just Samson and Sue from Gift Biz Unwrapped. And I can even remember, like I could go on forever remembering these names because I see them every single day, right? Mary Fan and just all the amazing people in there. It's crazy because they've made it a part of their regular daily routine. It's a part of their life now. In fact, I've had people disappear for a day and come back and say, hey guys, I'm so sorry I wasn't able to make it today. Kind of crazy. And I think this just shows that the consistency is important. And when you show up, whether it's a YouTube channel that you go live with every single day, whether it's YouTube videos that you pop up once a week, whether it's a podcast or a blog that you consistently publish with, consistency is key because it shows people that you're there for them and you're gonna show up. And I think the more regular you do it, the more likely it is that people are not just gonna engage with you, but engage with your people too. In fact, I've scheduled my YouTube lives ahead of time. If you go to patflynn.com slash income stream, you can always see the next one. Again, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, every single morning, I think that's four or five in the UK. There are people in the room early who are chatting with each other, welcome each other in. Uh, each other in. They're almost like a welcome uh, committee for everybody who's new there. So now if somebody pops in hearing the stream for the first time, you come in early, you see there's a community there already, well, you're more likely to stick around, which is pretty cool. I guarantee you that wouldn't happen if people didn't know ahead of time that number one, it was scheduled for that time, and number two, it wasn't regular. So going live consistently like that has been really amazing for drawing the same people in. I mean, some people in there have been in every single one, every single one. It's pretty amazing. I, I, I am so thankful for everybody who comes into the income stream. The Quarantine, team, that's what they're known as, the Quarantine. team. If you wanna be a part of the Quarantine team, hope I can see on uh, the lives every morning too. And with those regulars, please do whatever you can to recognize them, to thank them. I took one of the live streams not too long ago. For the first 10 minutes, I was just like recognizing those who I remember always pop in. I It was almost like a uh, an award show. I wasn't giving away anything, but I was just recognizing people like the most helpful helpful person, uh, just Samson to, you know, giving credit to Rap and Combat for creating a Slack channel for the community there, which takes us to tip number four, the, the th crazy thing that happened, number four. Um, yeah, they created a Slack channel like on their own to discuss the show afterwards. Every single day they get in there and they're getting more and more people in there. Now there's been some debate as to whether or not I should be in there as well. I've had a few people invite me to it, but what's really cool is there's been a lot of team members, people in the community, the Corn team step up and go, no, 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 this is, Pat's busy enough. He's got so many things to do. This is just for us to talk uh, about what we talked about today and what Pat showed in the website reviews on the channel and, and all that stuff. Like it's just, and that's completely unexpected that uh, somebody would step up and create a Slack channel to bring the community together to continue the conversation even after the show. And if you come to the live streams, you'll see the link to the Slack channel in the description below, along with a bunch of other links that I have in every single one, like uh, the equipment I use and all that kind of stuff too. Speaking of community, this is another thing that I eventually found out, and that is while there, and yes, I do Q&A, I do some website reviews, which are really fun, but I got to tell you, there's something magical that happens when you just kind of get into the mindset of, I'm gonna tell a story. Storytelling is fantastic. It's a thing that I think podcasts are meant for and I think live streams are just the same. When you can sort of break up the monotony or the pattern of just Q&A or just random chat with a story that you're gonna tell, like story time with 
you, the host. Like, it, it just changes the mood, and it gets everybody to sort of sit on the edge. Of, like, remember in school when it was like, okay, kids, story time? Like, you sit in a little circle in class, and just everybody's like, like, reading the story. Like, you're reading the story, the teacher's reading, and you're just kind of, like, I don't know. If, I, I don't, that's how I read stories or listened to stories in kindergarten. I was just like, maybe it's because I have a hot teacher. But anyway, one thing I've done to sort of even differentiate the storytelling even more is when I'm telling a story, I play some songs like this. So I'll play this this music and it repeats and you'll see how this sort of connects to uh, the next tip that I'm gonna share with you, the next thing I'm gonna reveal. But if you listen to this, this is actually a version of the theme song of the income stream. That's right. That's another thing that's crazy that's happened. This has become so serious. It's become its own show that I needed to create a theme song. And I have to credit Mike and Isabella from musicradiocreative.com. They're an amazing company who have access to all kinds of voices, all kinds of music, all kinds of musicians to create music, voiceovers, you know, podcast intros, video intros, those kinds of things for your channel. And uh, they created this music. And so I just played with you the lullaby version. I'm gonna play with you the actual theme song right now. It's just about 40 seconds. It's a little corny, trust me, but it's very me. And I think this is why people enjoy it. You know, I'm not here to, to bring, you know, everybody in the world in to watch me. I'm here to bring the people who wanna come in and spend time with me and each other for a common goal which is number one, just connection during this crazy time, but also the ability to learn and get in uh, inspiration during this time to make possible things that weren't possible before to help you build a business, to build a life of your own and all that great stuff. So here's the intro song. I, I Like I said, uh, the other song that I played was the sort of lullaby story time version, which breaks up the pattern and, and sort of enhances the stories that I'm telling. Like people really respond well to the stories, by the way. But here's the song that was created for the income stream. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. And then this part is called The Bed, which is where I start the show. Hey, everybody, welcome in today. Today's April, whatever, and today we're going to talk about X, Y, and Z. First of all, I'm going to start by telling you a quick story about something that happened to me the other day and then that music sort of dies down so yeah we like have a song and people have memorized it it's some people have called it an earworm which apparently means it gets stuck in their head which is really cool and of course because it's playing every single day something people memorize it's just is a uh, part of the culture of the show which is pretty crazy i had no idea that would happen next one thing i started injecting sort of halfway through uh the streaming run here so far and by the way i'm not ending anytime soon as long as we're in quarantine together i'm going to be doing it so again i hope you show up patflin.com slash the income stream again all the links below um but one thing that's worked really well are like goals right oftentimes we see people who are live who go hey, like hit the like button, smash the like button, murder that that like button, you know, destroy the like button. And like for no reason whatsoever. Um, I think having a goal during the live stream is really cool. And even like with no reward whatsoever, just having the goal itself, like, hey, we're gonna try to get to 200 likes today. And like, let's see if we can get there. Like people do it. And of course that helps with the engagement. It probably helps with the algorithm as well. And People come together. It's it's really interesting. There's a lot of people in the group who go, "Come on, guys, we can do it!" Like there's there's we, we like hit the like button. We're almost there. You know, five more to go. People get excited about it. I think it just gives them something small that they can rally behind. Lately, however, I've been injecting uh, on top of those goals some rewards. And you know, sometimes it's a signed copy of my book, for example. But you don't need to give away things or send people anything or pay for anything. Quite honestly, uh, the ones that have worked really well are when I'm going to share a failure story or some, you know, random collection that I have uh, that's just literally random, but it's something that people can look forward to unlocking if they get to that goal. So I would recommend see how you might be able to, after you sort of get a sense of how many people might be coming in the room every day or every week, just have a like goal. 100 likes, well, we'll you know, I'm going to tell you uh, this this crazy story, but I'm only going to tell if we get to 100, 100 likes. It works. Now, one of the most incredible things that have happened since going live is many of the viewers, whether it's a regular viewer who's been in every single one or sometimes somebody who just catches me once for the first time, I've had many people reach out to me personally to send me an email or a direct message on Instagram or Twitter to not just thank me, but also 
give me stuff. And it's crazy because I don't ask for anything, but I've had somebody give me their merch. I had somebody, you know, buy me a book that isn't their own because they thought it would be helpful for me with some of the goals that I have about education that I've talked about on the show before. Like people going out of their way to reach out. And it's been pretty amazing and very unexpected, especially for those who, you know, just see me even for once or twice. And I think that just speaks to how amazing going live can be in terms of building a relationship and getting people to know you and understand the real you and know that you're legit like sooner than later versus, you know, a edited video or it might take some time in a number of videos for people to really become a fan of yours or a podcast where it's just your voice uh, or like a blog where it's literally just your keystrokes that people are reading. And it's really hard to build a relationship on a blog, but on a live stream, it's the most personable thing you could do. It's just as almost as good as, you know, being there in person. Actually, it's safer because we can, we don't have to be six feet away from each other and worry about all the things that can, you know, I don't know what I'm saying, but you probably know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, all that to say, the connection that you make with your viewers, if you're live is pretty amazing. And, um, became very apparent after I started going live for about two weeks, just like the amount of people reaching out and, and how much going live means to them. Like it's, it's pretty incredible. Number nine, it's given me something to look forward to every single day. Like literally I wake up and I get so excited about the stream. There's a little bit of excitement, probably because I'm just not really knowing what's gonna happen. Like who knows what questions are gonna be asked or what websites I'm gonna review or who's gonna be in the room or what I'm gonna say. And that's part of the excitement. However, I do come in with a roadmap so that I have a little bit of a sort of a understanding of where I wanna take people or what's gonna happen. And I make that known. I think it's important to when you go live to at least allow people to understand sort of the plan for what's gonna happen in the live stream. Even though you might not know everything that's gonna go on, at least having a roadmap. It's a very Dale Carnegie way of sort of teaching uh, and pre presenting. Uh, there's a book called Stand and Deliver by Dale Carnegie where he basically says, if you want to give a good presentation, here's the here's the formula. Tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, then tell them what you told them. And that's essentially what I do. You know, here's the plan for the day, and then we do those things. And then at the end, it's sort of a summary and, and some final remarks to send people off and to invite people to hit the like button, to watch the next video, to uh, come back tomorrow and all that great stuff. So it's been really interesting because it's held me accountable to waking up it's allowed me to get excited right at the start of my day. And honestly, every single time after I hit end on, on the broadcast, like I'm so fired up and ready for the day. Like to have that interaction with people, to see that that I have a connection with them, that I'm helping out, just fires me up to get into that next meeting or Zoom call or to get into the grind of, of, of producing the next thing for you. It's just, man, I, I, I can't recommend it enough. It's been so much fun. That being said, there's been a couple of days where I might've had a late night the night before, you know, watching the new Chris D'Elia Netflix special or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, I got to wake up early the next day to, the, to, to do the live stream. And, and, and there are moments where I've been like, oh, I wish I could just sleep in or, you know, what if I just take a day off? But, you know, part of it is just challenging myself to go live every single day. Part of it's showing up for you and not wanting to let you down. But also, I know that once I start the live stream, you know, you just kind of pick up and that energy from the audience and and, and it just kind of feeds on you and, and you feed on it. And it, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's just, you know, you get that energy as soon as you hit go. So, you know, even though I'm tired and I don't want to do it all the time, I do it anyway and it always works out for the best. One thing that I've been experimenting with is taking clips from these larger streams, chopping them up a little bit and putting them into a separate YouTube channel. Obviously, if you've watched the Joe Rogan show or Joe Rogan experience, he does this on his JRE Clips channel or somebody on his team does this. He has a very long live stream, about two or three hours in length every time. And usually what I like to watch and I like to see are the little clips on JRE Clips. And uh, those are very searchable. So the idea is to take one little component or micro moment within the larger live stream, taking it out, allowing it to stand on its own in its own clip and putting it on its own YouTube channel. The reason why I don't put it on the same YouTube channel is this, I think that would be a lot of noise because I had, I already have my pre-recorded videos. I have the live streams every single day. A lot of people are already seeing those things to put clips on there too, I think would add a lot of noise. And I have in the past added a lot of noise going, um, you know, pre-recorded videos once or twice a day before. And so I've, I've known not to do that, but here it is, it's the Income Streams Clips YouTube channel, as you can see, just trying to make it easy. I hired somebody to do this for me. His name is Dan Norton, uh, he's great, and he shows up in the lives too if you wanna get connected with him. But uh, yeah, 141 subscribers, so not bad. I mean, this is just a month long experiment so far, and you know, the views aren't nearly as anything close to what I'm getting on my regular YouTube channel, but 
um, it's pretty cool. And, you know, some of these 87 views, and I imagine that over time, maybe some of these could get picked up, but either way, it becomes very shareable on social media, which I've done. It becomes something that could potentially be found for a lot of these more keyword-driven titles. And number three, it could drive more viewers to the live stream. So, you know, hey, I got nothing to lose except some time and a little bit of money to invest, and I have a lot more to gain if this were to work out. I'm going to give it about three months in terms of the experiment to see what happens, and We'll see if I continue or not, but I mean, even still, this is a great library of answers to questions that I could potentially point people to if somebody asks me a question via email or on the stream later or somewhere else. Oh yeah, I answered that question. Check it out on the Income Stream Clips. That can bring more people back to the regular show and you know it can expand from there. So that's kind of cool. By the way, I set up these live streams ahead of time and I was just, you know, I had the chat open for tomorrow's stream. I mean, look at this, Just Samson. He's a regular, he's been in here every day. He says, hi, the chat doesn't even start. The, the live stream doesn't even start until seven, eight hours from now. Like, what is he doing here? I don't know, but I love him. He's great. All right, and finally, I want to talk about income because going live every day has directly affected and also indirectly affected my income and the amount of money that was earned on the channel. So number one, like I shared earlier, the views are up. And because the views are up and because ads are enabled on a lot of my videos, we are seeing an increase in ad revenue across the board. So as you can see on the chart here, this is the about 30 days before I started going live. So February 23rd to March 23rd, I did have sort of an anomaly here. And this is actually a random live stream that I went live on that somebody had donated $300 on with a super chat. Thank you, Kevin, for that, by the way. Um, and that was very unexpected. So that's a little bit of an anomaly there. So the total estimated revenue during this 30 day time period before going live consistently was about uh, $2,975. So minus the 300, which you know only happened because I went live that day in February, uh, about 2,500 bucks if you, if you wanna call it that. So 2,500 bucks. Now let me go the last 30 days since going live. Since going live, and this is record from the last 30 days that I have available to me on the reporting here on YouTube, uh, we're seeing 6,150 eight dollars that's about a hundred and fifty percent increase now a large part of that is actually the regular youtube videos getting a lot more views right like i said and the ad revenue going up from there but an additional part of this are the super chats that are coming in too so here's just one example of a super chat coming in this is matthew Ciparito who donated ten dollars via a super chat. And as you can see, I pop it up on the screen there as, uh, as well. That's done using a tool called Streamlabs. I'm gonna do a video about that later on how I automate that process. So make sure you hit subscribe if you're doing more lives. I wanna show you some cool tricks later on. But uh, the, you know, here there's like $20 that were donated. And over time, there's just, you know, these super chats, they, they stick out because they become highlighted. There are ways that your community via the chat here on YouTube at least can donate. And um, that money that comes in via Super Chat for me in my streams, uh, I collect and then donate to the San Diego food banks. So just in March, um, the few streams that we did in March, we actually were able to donate over a thousand meals to people in need here in San Diego. We've already busted through that goal here in uh, April, which is pretty amazing. But uh, the revenue is up all across the board, not just because of the Super Chats, but because of just overall the, the whole channel seeing a growth since going live. So yeah, I'm gonna continue to do it. So it's been a fun experiment and I'm not stopping anytime soon. I'm probably gonna do another video about, uh, you know, what happens after three months of doing this because, you know, now that the school year is basically uh, over, the kids aren't going back to school. So I, it doesn't go over the time that I would normally do my live streams. If they were to go to, to the physical school, they're doing sort of distant learning right now, which is really interesting to see like, you know, 22 seven-year-olds on Zoom. It's just kind of amazing. Uh, and incredible, like shout out to teachers, shout out to, to to all the essential workers, everybody on the front lines working in healthcare. Just thank you so much for all you do, by the way, uh, as that comes to mind. But, you know, what does this mean for you? Should you go live daily? I don't know. It's an experiment worth doing, I think. However, do know that as you do this, you wanna make sure that you make it as easy for yourself as possible. In the first few days, it took a while to get the setup and set, get the rig all figured out. If you wanna see a little bit more about the setup that I use, plus budget-friendly options for setups that you can do similarly. Uh, there's a link in the description below as well for my website, patflynn.com, which describes all those things. Uh, I hope that you can come in and watch me live in the mornings, patflynn.com slash the income stream. 
come and join, see what it's like and see what new experiments I'm doing. And like I said, I'm gonna be creating a few more videos to help you who are gonna go live, who wanna make your live streams even more engaging and more fun and more easy to do. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And let me know in the chat below, if you're still here, what is the most surprising thing that has happened of all the things that I've shared here today? What is a big maybe eye-opener for you? Or what is a perhaps a relief for you? Whatever stands out, what one thing stood out to you in this video? I'd love to hear it in the chat below. And also, I give you permission to talk about your live show too. So telling you that you can share the name of and perhaps where to go and find you live. If you do go live, put it in the comment section below. I wanna just give a shout out to you and thank you for going live to help people in time of need during this time, or even just to go live to experiment. Whatever it is, I think it's a fun thing to do to get out of your comfort zone. I'm an introvert myself, so I do, like I said in the beginning, get a little bit nervous before I go live, but once I'm there, it's gonna be fun. If you haven't gone live yet, I challenge you to do it. I think you can do it. And again, the links below to a lot more information about how to go live, what tools I use. Big shout out and thank you to Ecamm for making it easy for me. Um, if you wanna check out that tool, just check out patflin.com slash Ecamm Live, and uh, that's my affiliate link, by the way, so I get a little bit of a kickback if you go through that. Anyway, super fun talking about this stuff. Cannot wait to share more as I learn, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things. I think as an entrepreneur, you have to get comfortable getting in front of people. It's good practice to sort of ad hoc, ad lib, sort of teaching and, and storytelling. I think that's an, an important piece of the puzzle, and um, finally, it's just going to help you stand out of the crowd for sure, because not everybody's going to do it. And like I said, the playing field's even now. So who's gonna step up? Hopefully you. Thank you so much for watching this. I appreciate you. Make sure you hit, hit subscribe. And uh, if you have a second, watch this video. This is the video I was talking about right here to help you with Ecamm if you wanna check it out. If you're a Mac user especially, check it out here. Thanks so much. And as always, Team Flynn for the win.